Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everybody. Uh, project this week, the homemade bowl sander. A little while ago my ash bowl was shown on the channel that I made and during the video I made the comment that I couldn't really get the best finish I possibly could because I didn't have a bowl sander and I didn't just couldn't justify spending about £50 to buy a bowl sander when I make properly one bowl every now and then uh, as it's a lot of money. Now Bazman, as it is, um, commented on that video he said well why don't you make your own? He said if you search on YouTube there's somebody on there called Marius Hornberger uh, who does a really good video. So I had a look around, uh, watched that video he made a fair bit of, of plywood, uh, mainly all cut on the bandsaw, uh, and it gave me a really good starting point. I then did a bit more searching on YouTube for bowl sanders again, and I came up with somebody called, which I have it here, John Waitley. But he, by the looks of it, he runs something called uh, Procraft wood, Woodworking and Wood Turning Supplies. Um, and again, like I say, relevant links to these down below and they basically supply the kit where you get all the workings and you basically design your handle and the neck yourself and everything and the actual uh, the heads and you've got everything that to stick together now I didn't need that purely and simply because I already had bearings uh, I had a few other bits and bits and pieces I didn't have to buy very much plus also the kit restricts you to making one bowl sander which is fair enough but it only allows you enough to produce say a couple of heads and therefore if something fails a bearing or something like that you're then sort of look back to square one to, to sort it all out I watched both videos and the thing I wasn't overly impressed with was this main neck both videos were cut on the bandsaw and they were very blocky so the parts on this what have I had to buy and what had I already got well first of all the bearings I bought a pack of these a pack of ten um, I don't think I've got them about anywhere I bought a pack of ten of those for when I did the lighthouse hopefully I'll show pictures up the side here as I go along on the various different things um, and my only concern on that was that these bearings, I mean, this looks absolutely amazing now. The spinning on that is absolutely amazing. But the bearings do have a fair, a little bit of friction to them. Um, before I got really the head on, it didn't spin so well. So that was my first worry, really, was that whether the bearings were going to be good enough. So the bearings I already had. The main bolts I had, I mean that's a coach bolt through this side to, to lock off the neck at whatever angle you want. Uh, that was my last one on there. They were long ones and as you see in the video I just cut them back with the rotary tool. So the only parts I've had to buy um, are basically the foam and the velcro and the sandpaper. Now the foam I got the idea from the second video I watched. Um, I've actually ordered its the squares. Well you can obviously see where the square was that I've cut out. They're squares of neoprene um, adhesive backed foam. That one's a five millimeter, which is what I've used on both of my heads. And at the same time as well, I ordered some three millimeter backed foam. Um, because I didn't know what was going to be the best option so again I may well create some more heads with the thinner foam obviously if you need something that that bit tougher so each of these foam squares cost around about two pound each off eBay now the velcro I bought in a 50 centimeter strip and you do get both halves but obviously I only need this half for what's actually going to be stuck on onto the actual heads. This was probably about the most expensive part. I think this one cost me, there you go, £4.38 off eBay. There was a lot of cheaper options available, but I wanted to look around for something that had some form of a branding or 
a rating to it. And this particular one came in as Velcro brand PS14. So the PS14 to me sounded, I mean, yes, I could Google it and search out probably what it, want, what it means, but to me, the PS, PS14 to me sounds like it's some form of a rating. The only other thing I had to buy as well um, was a bag of these insert nuts. I bought these from my local screw fix. Uh, for those in the UK, you'll know who Screwfix are. And basically, Screwfix do two types. They're both what they call the D-type. The D-type, as far as I'm aware, are the ones with these bits that go flush on the top here. Bag of these, though, 50 of them, cost me under around about £4. Might have been just under £4, £3 something. So, And it's worthwhile. Just And again, this is really the same that if you buy the kit as it is, you'll get one of those or two of those, one for each head. And that's it. You mess it up, and it's and it's gone. You've then got to go off and buy some more. So, for, like I say, for the sake of buying those. Now, the other thing as well is that um, it was quite handy actually when I was researching this. Yuval Lahav, um, and again, I will put a link below. Had just bought a pre-assembled sand bowler kit, and really all he had to do was make up the handle, I think, and possibly the heads, um, which he made all himself that way. And again, that's what he posted as well, gave me some ideas as well. So rather than going off and buying um, all your sanding discs and stuff like that, uh, which can be quite expensive, Uval has actually got some links um, on his video. So go and have a look at that. And I think it was somewhere like China or something like that, which um, you could buy, it's really strange, there was a pack of 60 or a pack of 100 50mm discs that you could buy in various grits uh, and they worked out really, really dirt cheap. I mean, I've ordered them, um, in actual fact, I've ordered two sets of 100 um, so that I've got stock of them because they are that cheap. I think with the sets of 100, what you do, you get 10 different grits, um, 10 of each type of grit. Now, it's really weird because I think they start off with something like 60 or 80 grit and they go up to the normal 120s, 180s, 240s, but then they miss the 320s, 400s, there might be a 600, then it goes to something like 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, something like that. So two key important grits to me that it's missed is the 320 and the 400s. So I hunted around for all the different options, looked all over eBay for different ideas, and in the end, I came up with these hook and loop pads. They're a 180mm pad. You get them in a pack of 10, just over £5. And when I was researching it, what I did is just using Excel, I created myself a circle in there at exactly 180mm and then create some circles of 50mm and just see how they all fitted. And obviously in the video you see I come up with something like that. So I could see straight away that from one of those 180mm discs, I could actually get seven straight away of the 50mm discs out of it. And at the same time, I could possibly get an 8 one out of there, but I opted to go for a couple of 35mm ones. Now that works out incredibly cheap. So because I knew I was going to be missing those grits, 320 and 400, I actually ordered a pack of 10 of these in 320 and 400 so for about 10 pounds I've got something like 70 50 mil discs of each grit so I was actually going to call this one my prototype um, because I really didn't think it was going to work out so well first time I didn't know whether my handle was going to be long enough and again I had absolutely brilliant fun turning these two pieces the, the neck and the handle uh, it was so nice to get back to fully using the skew um, and I didn't have too many problems with it so when I actually turned that down the idea was to start with was to get this bottom piece really finished off as much as you want with your hole drilled in and the insert nut in because then my next aim was was then just to take an ordinary 6mm bolt which is what these are which this fit to um, get myself a piece of waste block. It was then just a case of obviously just screwing this piece on here 
uh, spinning it around. I mean, sometimes you have to just retighten this a little bit more to make sure it's it spun a lot more truer, and then just finish off all the top. Uh, that was really, really dead easy. I hope I've mentioned everybody who's been influential in really me getting on and doing this project with all the research and everything like that. Uh, apologies if I haven't mentioned you. So if this is your first time here, please do subscribe. At least you'll get notified every time I upload a video um, and then you won't hopefully miss any. For my existing subscribers, again, as per usual, a big, big thank you very much. Uh, your keep coming back is most appreciated. And I mean, I really do appreciate all the comments. And like I say, it was from Bazman. Why I've done this really, basically. He's the person who really just pointed me in the right direction. So they are most appreciated, good or bad. Um, I, I value people's honest opinions. Um, so I would appreciate it if everybody hit the share button, hit the like button, and please do leave some comments below. So again, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next project video. Thanks a lot. Bye. Mm -hmm.